Hi, I'm Eva Lee's Page, and thanks for listening to the Believe Big Podcast, the show where we take a deep dive into your healing with health experts, integrative practitioners, biblical faith leaders, and cancer thrivers from around the globe. Welcome to today's episode on the Believe Big Podcast. My name is Eva Lee's Page, and it's an honor to spend this time with you. Today's episode is all about what you need to know about homeopathy. My guest and friend is the founder of Uriel Pharmacy, Mark McKibben. Uriel Pharmacy sells anthroposophic, homeopathic, and all natural medicines, remedies, and body care products. Prior to opening Uriel Pharmacy in 1996, Mark worked at the Standard Homeopathic, Walita USA, Walla in Germany, and even the Ida Wegman Clinic Pharmacy in Switzerland, along with opening up Raphael Pharmacy in California. Mark has been married to his wife, Pauline, for 10 years, and when not overseeing the operations at Uriel, Mark enjoys going to the live theater and beautiful places in nature. Welcome, Mark, to the show. Thank you so much. Great to be here. So our listeners are always interested in discovering what our guest's favorite health tip is. Can you share yours with us? Right off the top of my head, I would say always participate in the conversation with whoever the practitioner is. So you really get to know who they are and what they're saying. I think participating in the relationship is very important. Wow. That's a really great tip. I think sometimes we either take one of those sides, we're just listening or we're just speaking and having that back and forth conversation is really important in a relationship. Thank you. Yeah. So what is homeopathy? Can you share a brief history about it? Homeopathy goes back to the 1700s with Samuel Hahnem, a doctor in Germany. And really it's using natural substances in very minute doses where you prepare them by a sequence of steps where you dilute and succuss or shake or potentize. Those are names. You're putting the plant or the mineral or even animal substance into more of a force field that's specific to that substance rather than using, as conventional medicine does, more strong concentrated doses of physical substance. So that's why some people don't really think that it can do anything. But of course, the people that do use it, both doctors and patients, know that it's very helpful and it's known around the world. Yes. And how is it different than, like I see homeopathic remedies even in grocery store now at Whole Foods and other pharmacies. How is homeopathy different or different? Additionally to what you do at Uriel, which is the anthroposophic side. Homeopathy is a lot older. Starting in the 1700s, it's much more well-known around the world. Anthroposophic medicine really goes back to Rudolf Steiner in about 1920 or so. He started giving lectures to doctors that asked him for his advice. While anthroposophic medicine is pretty well-known in Europe, in Germany, there are a whole hospitals that utilize anthroposophic medicine, also in Switzerland. It's not nearly as well known as homeopathic medicine. There are some differences in how we potentize and how we prepare the products. For example, at my pharmacy, and we're really a manufacturing company as well as being a pharmacy, the plant extracts are prepared for the most part in water instead of alcohol. And we expose them over a seven-day period. We incubate them, but we expose them to the light of sunrise and sunset for a period of a couple of hours and stir them in that time. Sometimes there's cooling and warming. So we're fermenting these products without the use of alcohol. And we're drawing in what I would call the healing energies of sunrise and sunset, which I'm sure you could relate to. Everybody's seen a sunrise once in a while or a sunset, there's something special going on. There's colors, there's changes, there's a dynamic. And we think that can go into the medicine and may quietly in the background promote healing in a stronger way. 
I believe so. And there's so much science that is now coming out on simple things that one can do to benefit your health. Forest bathing. I just recently heard about that. Just walking through the forest allows these healing properties to help your health. Grounding, walking barefoot on the ground is becoming more well known about the magnetic forces on the earth that helps to restore our health as well. So yeah, I can see how those factors play a role in how special your medicines and how they are made. So many things like that used to be well known or understood by people, but we've lost a lot of that connection. So it's good to see it come back. In that regard, one doctor told me once that he felt only half of the effect of the medicine was what he prescribed. Mm. He said the other half is who gives the medicine, Mm. whether that's the mother giving it to her child or a nurse giving it or that human connection, as you know, is so important. Yes. And so are homeopathic remedies regulated in the United States? They fall under the category of drugs. So the FDA, Food and Drug Administration, will inspect companies that produce them. They're considered drugs. It's a special little category, but we're Part of that, we get inspected by FDA. From time to time, they come and make sure your procedures and paperwork is in order. Yes. And so are they considered safe? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Homeopathic medicine is so safe. I can't remember the last time that someone was injured by homeopathic medicine. Occasionally, you'll see something in the news where maybe something is considered to have been harmful. But usually, if you look closer, you'll see it's very much in question if it was actually the homeopathic medicine. Maybe it was something else that was involved. If you're pregnant, you can take them without concern. Old people, children, officially we have to put on the labels that the requirement of FDA, if you're nursing or you're under a certain age, consult a practitioner, those kind of things. That's fine. That's just to be safe. But if they ask me as a pharmacist, I think it's very safe. I've been thankful to have been able to use homeopathy with my kids. I was introduced to it when I was pregnant and we had a at-home kit that we would use. It was our go-to anytime there was a runny nose or an earache or flu symptoms. All of our kids got better and they didn't need the harsh antibiotics that need to be reserved for bigger illnesses, in my opinion. And so I love that you can start with something as gentle as homeopathy and that it actually works. It works. And the great thing is that you get stronger through it because you actually work through the problem as opposed to suppressing it. The classic example is using antipyretic anti-inflammatory drugs for simple fevers in childhood, where that really suppresses something that is an important process of taking hold of your own body. We inherit the body from our parents, and then we have to rework it. That's a perspective of anthroposophic medicine to be individual to us. And a lot of the inflammatory childhood illnesses are just that. I've seen that happen with my children. When they complete a whooping cough or some other feverish illness, they really look transformed. They have new capabilities. They've really made a developmental step. And you don't always see that if you come right away with the Tylenol or the ibuprofen to stop that process. And I love how simple and specific, like you're saying it is. In our family kit, you can even buy a textbook on how to use it and how to use it in your own home. Ours came with a pamphlet. And so Jimmy would open it up and our kids would have a runny nose and they would say things like, is it green? Is it stuffy? Is it worse at night? Is it worse when you lie down or in the morning? And it really helps you to zero in on what's the proper remedy that they need. And so I love how specific it is. And you can really get to the root cause of what was causing the illness to begin with. You can do a lot on your own. Then you can know if it's seeming like it's worse and you need a practice. Uriel also refers people to practitioners that do this kind of medicine so they can do telephone appointments or if you're lucky, you can find somebody in your town. I was thankful that my physician, who is also my integrative practitioner that helped me through my cancer, also knew homeopathy. I even took some homeopathic remedies during my cancer journey that really helped, I believe, my body to restore itself during that time. And so something from as serious as cancer that you would indeed need a licensed practitioner to really help you with those stronger illnesses and diseases, but on the gentler colds and common things that happen within a home, I love that we can be our own advocates for ourselves and our kids to help them through those illnesses. 
So where can they be purchased? I know I see some of them in grocery stores, but yours are specifically anthroposophical um, remedies that are also created. So how can one purchase homeopathic remedies? We're a relatively small company, so we don't appear in a lot of stores. Stores can have our remedies if they want to, but it's not our main avenue. The best way would be to go to the website, shopuriel.com, and there we have about 85 home remedies, body care products also. We manufacture 1,300 different remedies, but the vast majority are things that we really only offer to physicians because they know how to use them. We're not trying to promote them. We want the doctors to say how to use them, but the, all those home remedies are freely available at the website. Yes. And I think one that most people are familiar with, because you could even go to your local drugstore and they have Arnica gel and things like that. I love yours. I've been using it recently in a minor back sprain that I had, and it's been just such a huge aid in recovering. Is that the Arnica Echinacea cream? Yes. Yeah, that's a good one. It's fantastic. And one of the favorites at Believe Big for all of our staff is your Dolum Asculus. Am I saying that correct? It's a body yeah, oil. Yeah, it's perfect. You said it perfect. <laughs> all right. I always sometimes have a hard time with the names, but uh, that one is a favorite. And I've spoken about it before because I'm very sensitive to EMF. And anytime I travel or if I'm going to be on a computer for quite some time throughout the day, I always make sure I put that on after I shower. And I love that it protects you also from environmental toxins throughout the day. It has that peat moss and the St. John's wort to calm you. And it has so many benefits outside of being a wonderful lotion to put on after your shower. It's got such a nice smell, doesn't it? And it's something that so many people could use, especially people that tend to be more sensitive. They're the ones that suffer more from environmental stress or distress, but so many people could use it. A lot of children use it too. It can help with going to sleep and just apply it to the chest, or it can even be a complete body rub. It's definitely one of the favorites. For those who are unfamiliar with homeopathy, are homeopathic remedies costly? Compared to conventional drugs, really not. I would say it depends on the size package. If you buy some things in the store, you could buy 10 tablets in a blister pack for under $10. We don't have that dosage form. A two ounce tube of ointment might cost $25. Supply of 1,300 pellets that would last six weeks might be under $20. So it's not nothing, but compared to usual drugs, it's very reasonable. And the per dose cost is definitely less. It's definitely so affordable and easily accessible in order to help with whatever needs that you have in your home. So who practices homeopathy? You mentioned there are physicians that you refer individuals to. Strictly speaking, I guess you'd say we're anthroposophic homeopathic medicine, and we rely on practitioners to both create the remedies, to decide what remedies we should make. Unlike Big Pharma, where the marketing department basically R&D goes and brews up whatever they think will sell, and then they detail the doctors. We're the opposite. We let the doctors create it. They're Almost all are available without a prescription. So people who know what they want can order what they want. Practitioners don't require a license in order to prescribe it, but most of our practitioners are either medical doctors or naturopaths, osteopaths, nurse practitioners, physician's assistants, the usual prescribers. But if somebody in homeopathy, classical homeopathy, you can take a training course as a lay person and just be a practitioner yeah. because the homeopathic medicines generally don't require prescriptions. It's just whether you generate confidence in having people come to visit you. It's a specialty on its own. So there are many integrative practitioners that know homeopathy and especially the ones that we work with at Believe Big because doesn't mistletoe therapy fall under the anthroposophic homeopathy label? That definitely came out of Steiner's work with Ida Wegman, the first anthroposophic doctor back in the early 1900s. That's where mistletoe began to be used. Can you explain how mistletoe is used by anthroposophic physicians in the treatment of cancer? That's actually a very well-known remedy in Europe where there are several companies that prepare mistletoe as a cancer remedy. It's been used that way since the early 1900s. I believe there's over 250 studies that show its usefulness. Typically, it's indicated for quality of life, meaning you feel much better when you're taking that. It does have active ingredients in it, which can both diminish tumors and also increase the immune system's activity. It can also be used 
is to lower the amount of chemotherapy that's used if you're using mistletoe simultaneously. But that's really something that's available in Europe, and there's companies that produce it there. If somebody was interested, they could ask their physician if that's something they can access. I know that was one of my treatments that I believe helped me overcome my stage four diagnosis. And for a fact, it allowed me to be able to overcome great odds, but it gave me strength. It helped me with my mood. It helped with so many different things besides just that the anti-cancer properties. And I share with individuals today that I'm still on mistletoe and a maintenance dose because I know that it also can mm. prevent a recurrence and it keeps my body in high alert so that I can continue to stay strong for many years to come. And the great thing about it is that it's relatively harmless. If you take the right dose, it's completely harmless. Yes. And it's unheard of being something that's both effective and non-toxic. Yeah. The plant itself has a slight toxicity. You don't take that amount to where it would be a problem. I love all these things that God made in nature to help our bodies heal is just fascinating to me. It's at the real pharmacy school. I wish they'd taught that in pharmacy school, but I had to go figure it out on my own. <laughs> We're so glad. What made you decide to open up your pharmacy? In a way, the bigger question is, why did I go into this field at all? Mm -hmm. I was a student in college, and I was already interested in Rudolf Steiner, and I'd been to a Waldorf school in, in high school. I guess I was just interested in that whole approach. But I met an anthroposophic physician who advised me to become a doctor so I could practice anthroposophic medicine. I said, well, that's a great idea, but my grades were just not going to get me into medical school. So he said, why don't you become a pharmacist? We really need a pharmacist because the guy that's doing this at the Walida in New York, he was an 80-year-old Austrian pharmacist. He had fled the Nazis and come to New York. He'd been trying to retire for 10 years, but they wouldn't let him because they didn't have anybody else. And that really appealed to me that there was a need. I think I was driven by the need. I was just a young person looking out what I was going to do next in life. And so I said, hey, I'll do that. All it took was somebody to say, and that's for the rest of my life. I've been doing the same thing at different places. I started Uriel in 1996 because I needed to do my own project before I had either worked for other companies learning or I worked for a very nice uh, community nonprofit organization. But I realized at age 40 that I needed to have the latitude to follow up my ideas and not have to pass them through a board. I liked the idea of having a company where I could make decisions. So for some people, that's more effective. Some people are better at socially cooperating and working things out. But sometimes you just need to let a person with ideas have the latitude to get stuff done. The availability of all these products is really because with the help of God, I was able to just embark on doing this. If I had to pass it through boards and business decisions about whether this or that's worthwhile, I think a lot of it never would have happened. It's definitely a, a divine appointment seeing that you left sunny California to go to Wisconsin to open up Uriel says something there. In the frozen tundra now, <laughs> because th this is where it's happening. That's right. I've been out to your facility in Wisconsin and it's beautiful. I love that all the ingredients that you all use organic whenever possible, but that you also are surrounded by biodynamic farming that you use in your remedies. Can you share with individuals what is biodynamic farming? That goes back to Steiner. It's really an extension or development. It's definitely organic, but there are also certain herbal preparations that go into the compost piles. So in making compost, you add these things to it. There's some things developed from cow manure and from finely ground silica or quartz, which are turned into products that you spray on the ground to increase microbial activity in the ground or the quartz silica preparation, you spray on the leaves and developing fruit of the plant. And I've seen how they work. They make the fruit develop and become more sweet and tasty. The leaves all stand up when they get this spray on them at the right times of year. So it's something that makes plants more dynamic, which ultimately increases nutritional value. So that helps us to be healthier. It's not even that complicated in a way, the actual carrying out of these procedures. So you make compost anyway. Now you're adding some herbal preparations to it. If you want to get into the whole background, it's quite esoteric and challenging to read about, but it's not necessary. You can be a farmer and just do this because it makes things work better on your farm. 
I think that's something that's so missing, even in organic produce that is available now. It's so over farmed and used that the nutrients are no longer in the soil because they're continuing that farming process. So I love the biodynamic farming principles because you're really giving back to the soil and allowing the nutrients to do the work to create the plants that flourish kind of like ourselves. What we put in is what's going to come forth. So what we eat will be a big determinant of our health. And same with the medications we use and the products we put on our body. I'm so grateful. That's one of the values that you all share at Uriel because it's important to me what I put in and on my body to make sure that I'm the healthiest that I can be. I was just thinking it's such a challenge to create an organization. People who aren't in organizations that have these purposes like Believe Big or Uriel, it takes a lot to keep it on track. How do you keep the focus in the right place? Or how do you prepare for succession when you get older? So there's a sort of organizational development track to keep things healthy, just like we want to keep ourselves healthy physically and mentally, spiritually. It's almost like looking at your business or your organization as a being. How do you maintain that health? And with social issues that come up, how do you know you have the right people in the right places? It's a big undertaking in order to fulfill this purpose. Purpose is one thing. The other is how do we keep it together? Yeah. So it's nice to look at that as a sort of health challenge also. I agree. And Uriel is a unique name and I love the meaning of it. Can you share that with our audience, what Uriel means? Uriel is one of the archangels, like the archangel Gabriel and the archangel Michael that's talked about in the Bible. Steiner talks about the archangel Uriel as a being that looks down on earth and surveys human beings and is very much about truth and what's right and looks at and has a assessing or judging look to ascertain where are people not holding up to the truth. I always say, Uriel doesn't take any BS. That's the message that I got from that. And I I said to that, when we built a new building recently, and I had a little groundbreaking ceremony, the builder's there and the staff is there. I said, our goal has to be to not put out BS, to strive to be with the truth. I feel like as Christians, we are to be the hands and feet of Christ. And so by honoring him and what we say and what we do really shares with others in the world that there is good, there is hope, and there is a bright future ahead, no matter what we're hearing in the news or happening in the world around us. And in closing, I know our time is already coming to a close. Is there anything else that you would like to add about homeopathy or anthroposophic preparations of medications that I have not asked you yet? I always think of the future. I've always thought into the future. We're here doing our work right now, but it's also for the future to create a whole different way of medicine that we understand how intellectual, scientific, conventional medicine has come about. And it's so helpful for emergency type situations, the car accidents and things like that. It's amazing. Chronic disease, it really doesn't have a good understanding of or a good handle on. And there is so much more. That part really needs to be reworked mentally and also in the medicines that are applied. Just as I mentioned before, The usual approach is to have the R&D boys in the marketing department dream up what's the next big opportunity or how can we make an opportunity? And it's all based on financials, which is totally the wrong approach. It's got to be based on healing. And that all by itself is just like with organic or biodynamic farming. There's a lot of economic pressure on farmers to cut corners and somehow survive because it's not an even playing field. And as you say, we have to be positive and joyful in every day to put out this message that we trust that the future can change if we can embrace it and consider a bigger spiritual context that can support us to do this work. Well, you should be very proud for the work that you all do at Uriel Pharmacy. I truly believe that you're a piece of moving modern medicine forward. And we're thankful that we have this available for us today to use. So thank you so much for being on the podcast. (laughs) Sure. We do have fun doing it too. Thank you. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support our podcast, please subscribe and share it with others. Be sure to visit BelieveBig.org to access the show notes and discover our bonus content. Thanks again and keep believing big.